Hello, you're watching Telecom TV. I'm Guy Daniels, Director of Content. Automation is essential to the success of 5G operations, from orchestration through to service assurance. Now, to discuss the progress of automation in 5G networks and lessons learned from early deployments, I'm delighted to say we are joined by Rolf Eberhardt, who is Head of Orchestration for the Communications Technology Group at Hewlett Packard Enterprise. Hello, Rolf. Very good to see you again. Now, we know that automation in 5G networks and services is essential for telcos, but could you outline the challenges they are facing and why automation is so important for them to succeed? Or, you know, worst case scenario, maybe even just to survive? Yeah, that's a very good question. So there's three real things which you need to look into. First of all, it's about simplification. Um, 5G isn't exactly what you would call a simple technology. It's got uh, complexity on all levels, starting you know, in the infrastructure layer where you have to be able to deploy in multi-cloud environments. Then looking at 5G network functions itself, it's not exactly um, you know, solid and well-defined network uh, technology. Software is still evolving, so you'll have a high level of agility coming in many many releases being popped up and then third the, the entire 5g technology and the services behind it is extremely new tech so you if you if you take all these three elements together and you are unable to to manage this in a simplified fashion you're going to be in deep trouble and it's not going to be easy to manage such a complex environment so simplification number one number two is opex reduction obviously you know, this is about cutting costs and and cutting costs requires automation to the extreme no matter what you do you just need to get things out of it you need to get costs out you need to be, be able to to um, um, reduce the involvement of human beings in the process you need to give as much self-service to the customers and last but not least it's about risk elimination as i was saying it's a very complex environment and because it's complicated, there's also a certain risk related to it. And so you want to be able to push as much risk to the network functions itself to make sure that they identify and resolve problems even before they come, they pick up, which means automated assurance, root cause analysis early onwards so that you're able to provide a good customer experience. And have you noticed a strong acceleration of 5G automation projects, or are we still at an early stage? Well, we've left, we've left the train station. We are now slowly moving forward. I would say CSPs have gotten into their first experience with non-standard loan. Now we're in the process of, of learning how to operate uh, network functions. Um, there you can say we're good. If you if you look at the pilots we've been doing, we're taking the next step up, providing integrated uh, service experience, also slowly advancing. Where we where we aren't yet is in a full end to end environment. This is where the next pilots will come in, where you'll be showing to the market a full ability to manage all the building blocks in an integrated fashion. That's where we're still pretty much in the in the discovery phase. So this is going to be a long journey, but what do you believe are the main lessons, the key takeaways from the automation projects you've been involved with? You need to start bottom up. First thing are the network functions. You need to be able to onboard the network functions in an efficient manner. They have to be brought into your CI/CD chain. Um, you need to also integrate the network function in an efficient manner. And that's an area where we still have a weakness in our market today. You know, the network functions today very often don't provide standardized APIs, for GPP APIs. So you will need, you will need to learn how to use the, the non-standard API provided by the network function suppliers. Once you have reached that point, you go one step up and the next step would be you know, building integrated network services, moving towards uh, multi-cloud environments where you where you expand the network architecture across different clouds for a larger reach. 
And then the third step will be to move into the service model. So there you're going to have uh, service profiles, which are typically going to be static in nature at the beginning. These uh, simple service profiles are today sufficient to, to handle the customer needs, which, which the market is asking for. And then once, once you have passed that point, we'll go towards dynamic service models. So um, <clears throat> models where the, where the 5G network and the automation allow you to be much more dynamic in the, in the uh, deployment and the, and the provisioning of services, as well as, as the entire automation, including healing around it. Um, these are the necessary steps. Most important is keep your, your end goal in mind because you don't want to uh, lose an investment which you've been doing along the way just because you made a mistake up front. Those are the experiences which we're seeing. Well, let's move on now to see how you are helping operators here. HPE introduced a brand new offering to automate 5G networks and services. And I wonder if you could explain to us what this offering brings to the market. HP has been doing a lot in automation for decades. You know, we have a very strong footprint in assurance and we have a good footprint in the orchestration business. What we've been doing now is bringing these two elements together. Why? Well, because having a complete life cycle, all the functions you need for the successful operations of 5G is actually going to be a differentiator for our CSPs. If they're able to manage all the services across all the steps of their life cycle, both from the network function level all the way up to service level, then you have something which is quite attractive for the market. So there's two main components in HPE's new 5G automation offering here, orchestration and assurance. So can you go into some more detail about what they do and then tell us why they jointly solve the problems faced by operators? Correct. The orchestration part consists of two elements. Um, our service director uh, intent-based orchestrator, which we use to manage all the services within the system. Um, the, the services we, we model are described using the 3GPP NRM model. And that's quite important because with 3GPP, we now finally have uh, a very good and, and comprehensive service description and a, a possibility of standardizing and describing in a uniform way all the elements which you need for, for a 5G network. On the assurance side, we're coming in with automated assurance, which brings us um, a data-driven AI ML environment. And there we're building on top of the, uh, this environment value packs with the technology built into the, into the analysis so that you're able to, based on this technology, analyze and root cause uh, review plus remediate potential problems which are which are identifying both on the network function layer and later on in the service layer as well bringing assurance and orchestration together into one architecture has huge benefits because you obviously have the ability of managing in an end-to-end -end fashion the entire life cycle of 5g network functions and of services out of one box and that's that's a value which we believe only HPE can really bring to the market. And as you say, you've been aligning two standards from 3GPP and Etsy in designing your 5G automation solutions. And you understand that you've even been pre-building them with your own 5G core stack offering. Correct, correct. For us, Etsy has proven to be really the important element. And we've, we've seen a lot of activities in the market. They've been, um, They've been open source initiatives as well, but at the end of the day, Etsy from an orchestration perspective has given us all the features and functions necessary for efficient orchestration. Uh, likewise, 3GPP is really the standard which has now brought a very well structured service model and network resource model to, to operations. And using those, both, those two together, gives us, um, and we believe that's really key for our industry, a unique way of, 
of describing multi-vendor, multi-technology environments in a in a holistic fashion. Because what we want what we want to have our customers use is um, open network environments, flexible network environments, flexible service environments. And that's something which you can only do if you have a common foundation and that's what standards pro, uh, provide us. What's important, however, is that our industry is not yet there. Yeah? We, you know, we still have many different technologies built in. If you look at, at interfaces, you, know, you have REST APIs, Yang APIs, uh, CRDs, for example. Uh, so a deluge of different integrations. So in addition to being standard supportive, you need to be still be able to, to integrate with reality. And those are the, the APIs that exist today. So finally, Rolf, could you summarize what makes the HPE 5G end-to-end -end automation solution so relevant for telcos? Number one, it's one suite. Number two, we bring in really cool and proven technology, both in the area of intent-based orchestration, as well as in the area of AI ML-based automated assurance. Number three, we believe in standards. However, we also believe in the ability to integrate with whatever is around in the market, because that's what reality is about. Number four, we believe in, in agility, CICD, and in the ability to, to provide securely and, and well-structured platforms to the market, which can run on any kind of system, be it your own on-prem environment or the cloud. Rolf, we must end our conversation there. As always, it's been a pleasure talking with you and thank you for joining us today. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. It was fun talking with you.